So seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm gonna call this meeting of governance organization legislation to order. It is 1031 on March 3, 2021. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. This meeting of GOL is being conducted by remote participation. We are being recorded and um, I'm going to just check and make sure everybody can hear and be heard. Um, so I'm going to start with Mandy. Present. And uh, Darcy. Here. And Pat. Present. And Sarah. Present. Great. And our guests, Chris. Yes, present. Felicia. Felicia. Present. And Saren, can you hear us? Present. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put up on the screen just for a moment for my colleagues' sake and for the public's sake. Um, let's see if this hopefully is what I want. All right, you should see the agenda. Is it large enough or would you like it bigger? Good enough. All right, so we're going to begin this morning with the decarbonization resolution. The council sponsors are present and so is uh, the sponsors of the resolution from the community. Um, then we're going to turn to the Tibet Day proclamation and the sponsor is present, the resident sponsor is present. Um, then we are going to look at rule of procedure 6.3D. Um, we have something in the packet for that. Um, we have a discussion topic, item number five, and uh, then a series of sort of housekeeping exercises um, that we'll, we'll do. We also have three sets of minutes that we need to approve today and they are in the packet. So that's uh, what we have on the agenda. Any concerns about it? Or I think we're gonna pretty much follow this order is my plan. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen now unless I see any hands from my colleagues. And um, I'm gonna ask Mandy to uh, share with her screen the decarbonization resolution. Um, as I said, the sponsors here are myself and Darcy Dumont from the council. And I've listed ECAC as the um, resident sponsor. Um, that can be corrected for the record. Um, that was just what I thought was right, but I often have the wrong thoughts. So yeah, um, I, I think that is not, that's not the community sponsor. So what would it what would it be, Darcy? What should it be? Felicia, what is the name of the group? Building Electrification Acceleration Committee. One more time, please. Building. Okay, sorry, sorry. Building electrification. electrification acceleration. Mm -hmm. Committee. Committee. Yeah. Okay. And and I I I'm using my marked up copy. So thank you. As we go through, you'll see changes I will be suggesting. They mm -hmm. haven't been made yet. I just want to say the people that are the sponsors and all that are here, mm -hmm. but it's going to be easier for me in sharing to toggle through that. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, is is a town committee a commune, can it be a community sponsor? Because we could add energy and climate action committee to give it a little bit more. Well, I think it's just, yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with that as long as it seems like they've been involved. They've been, as long as they've been involved in the creation of this document um, and are sponsoring it publicly, um, I think that's perfectly okay. Do my colleagues have any thoughts yeah, on that? that we just add that after yeah, I mean, comma, I, yeah ECAC. My, my concern is has ECAC agreed to sponsor it? Well, they endorsed it. Okay. We, we brought it to them, got their feedback. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. This is a new development for us. I mean, yes, we've been at this for two years now, but I think it was actually Pat's suggestion, um, or maybe also Darcy, but the last meeting that we should include in the actual resolution at the top the names of the, uh, the resident sponsors or community sponsors, and of course the council sponsors, um, just for the record. Um, also for the sake of my colleagues, when they get this in the packet, they have a better sense of where it's coming from. Um, so I thought that was an excellent suggestion and I think that's gonna become our regular practice. So thank you. Um, so as you see, uh, Mandy's already gone through and done some of the little sort of things that, that we do here at GOL, uh, putting it into um, 
the proper form. Generally speaking, we do not discuss the merits of a proclamation or resolution. Um, we're concerned simply with uh, clarity, consistency, and actionability. Um, but since this is the only committee that's going to be looking at this, um, I'm going to give us a fair wide latitude um, with this. And essentially what we ask our sponsors to do is respond to questions um, that the committee has or to respond to any edits or changes we make if they are concerned about them. Um, and in, in the past, in, generally speaking, actually I think in all cases, um, we're able to come to a, an agreeable co uh, a compromise. But if you see something that um, you don't, or you just have a question about in terms of the change we're making, um, or if we have questions for you, um, we'd ask you to respond. But this is not um, the place um, for us to uh, be speaking on behalf of, of the uh, resolution that should be taking place in other forums. Um, okay. So um, what Mandy has done, uh, just again, just uh, uh, bookkeeping or just clarification, we put and after each, whereas. Um, she has, let's, we're going to go through whereas by whereas. So the second whereas has a, a significant change. Amherst yeah. is committed yeah, to a goal of carbon neutrality. So that, I think, uh, thoughts on that. Uh, Mandy, why don't you first explain yeah, so, why you did this? So I did it, I, I, and I don't know whether this is the right language or not, but, but I think the 80% reduction is one of the old votes, but the current council goals is carbon neutrality by 2050. The climate action goals that the council passed in 2019, I actually looked them up. There's two other goals, um, some reductions by 2025 and 2030. Um, from 2016 levels actually, not 1990 levels. So I don't know what you as sponsors would want to put in there, but the 80% seemed an old goal. <laughs> so I, I went with the 2050 carbon neutrality. It kind of, repeats the second phrase though. So I don't know whether you wanted what you would want, but I feel like for consistency, the 80% is the wrong reference now. What do you think, Felicity? I, Felicia, I think that that is, uh, I think that's good. I think it's better. I think it's a definite improvement, but yeah. I don't think it matters. The question is whether the- I would combine the two. Oh, mm, no, I wouldn't combine Amherst the two. committed to um, Amherst um, has committed to uh, carbon neutrality through the town council's energy and climate action prioritizing planning process or whatever. I don't know. Somehow. So actually, the, now that I read it, the, it's not the town council's energy and climate action committee. It's, it's not. the town's. Okay. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. But it, yeah. Okay. I think it's, I, I don't have a problem. With that, if that is what the town decided, I, I guess I'm not up on what it is. So unless somebody else has anything else to say, I think uh, that's the point isn't, you know, what exactly we said. It's just we want to go forward. So thank you, Mandy. So what it reads now is whereas Amherst is committed to a goal mm -hmm. of carbon neutrality by 2050 and the town's Energy and Climate Action Committee recommends prioritizing planning to achieve zero emissions by 2050. You're satisfied with that? I guess carbon neutrality, it's probably net zero emissions. So I don't the, know. The goal is, I'll, I'll just read the climate action goals we adopted, because that'll be easier. 50% um, reduction in townwide greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas emissions below FY 2016 levels by 2030, with an interim goal to meet 25% reductions by 2025. Be carbon neutral no later than 2050 be prepared to achieve carbon neutrality as early as 2030 by planning and advocating for state and federal action and taking advantage of technological advances. I, I know that the, st the, the, the state plan is to get uh, net zero by 2050. That is to say, having a certain amount of sequestration, uh, balancing the portions that cannot, ever, cannot be achieved. So I don't know if saying zero emissions by 2050 is it, it is, uh, that's pretty, it's not going to happen for one thing, uh, but it's also not consistent with what the, at least with what the uh, S9 says and the, um, and the governor's uh, cli climate energy and, and uh, green, clean energy and climate plan is. I don't know if it matters. If that, it represents what the town of Amherst has uh, decided to do, really achieve zero emissions by 2050, then it's fine. It just isn't consistent with the statewide goals. 
Darcy oh. has her hand raised. Darcy, please go ahead. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, I think it's just talking here about the, what Energy and Climate Action Committee is doing and they're, they are following the town goals of achieving carbon neutrality or net zero emissions by 2050. So inserting yeah. the word net would be appropriate. Um, yeah, so. that's, that's fine. I think that would be roughly equivalent to carbon neutrality. Right. So there is Mandy's point that Renaissance essentially saying the same thing twice. And what's nice about what she read was that there are some very specific goals that are included in our climate action goals of the town that are actually different and more specific uh, spread out over years. So what I would, and it complicates things, but it would, I would suggest is inserting one or more of those goals and leaving carbon neutrality out of it because that's what net zero emissions means. Um, or you could put just carbon neutrality at the very end. But I kind of liked the reference to specific uh, goals. It reminds us, at least those of us on the council, uh, what our goals actually are, it reminds the public. Um, but it would take a moment or two to, to get that inserted. Um, I agree with Mandy, it, it, and I don't know what the sponsors feel, but in a sense, this whereas says the same thing twice. And I don't think that's what you want to do. Um, so Mandy, I don't know, you've got the document in front of you. Um, you may not want to include all of the specific um, interim goals, but maybe picking one, maybe one with greenhouse gas emissions. You, the year should be, I guess, what you said, 20, fiscal 2016 and the year 2030. I think that actually is, uh, that certainly means something to me as, as a counselor, um, reminding me of what we're committed to. Um, and so this document is doing that. I don't know if you wanted to add anything else or if that's sufficient, um, but I think there was one, at least one other interim goal that you mentioned, Mandy. There's a 2025 of 25 percent. Okay. That's, that's actually a pretty important goal. Yeah. Um, Good. So maybe you should, uh, you mean the 25% one, Darcy? Yeah, 25%, 25 by 25. Okay, then I think that should be included. <laughs> no, that's that's good. That's, you know, I think that's important. We have no problems with that. No, I, I, good. Okay. Okay, good. So I think that's that's sufficient. So now you're saying three very different things, but all three very important things. So there's a nice progression um, through 2050. Um, okay. Um, next, whereas um, I have no problems with that. I'm looking at my own notes. If, if I'm trying to watch the screen for hands raised, but you can also just wave your hand at me um, or just speak up, quite frankly. But um, we have one change, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. I think it's the sixth, whereas uh, I want the sponsors to weigh in here. Mandy, again, if you want to say what your change was. Yeah, I changed, I, this, this hails from my charter commission days where citizens isn't inclusive necessarily of all residents. Um, so I, I always, if you're not referring to voting and things that actually require US citizenship, I always try to change it to residents. You know, and obviously that's something that is up to you guys, um, but that's my suggestion. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, if we could, I think that makes sense to me and well as well. If we go up just to one whereas above, I may be misreading this or maybe you corrected it, Mandy. Um, you have natural gas. This is natural gas and propane are dangerous fossil fuels that generate indoor and outdoor air pollution, comma. It seems grammatically that should be leak. In other Ooh, words, I missed that one. That's all right. Leak explosive Yay. gas from aging infrastructure and put. Okay, good. Thank you. I got the put. <laughs> Thank you. You got the put. That's all right. Okay. Um, so if we want to continue scrolling down, um, no other changes that I have. Again, Pat or Darcy no. or Sarah, speak up. Um, so again, these are again just minor changes. And then finally, the first now, therefore, um, be it resolved. Thank you, Mandy. I missed that. And yeah. my change from four to a pawn is a consistency of the rest of the right be it resolves. Okay. And I think we normally end each resolved with a period, not the semicolons. Yep. That is also correct, Mandy. Thank you. 
All right. Um, no changes that I have and that Mandy has or anyone else so apparently. This is actually to... a move. Um, okay. If I, the, these, move, right. these two were, you know, it was like all Amherst, all Massachusetts stuff and then a few Amherst things and then back to Massachusetts. So it seemed more logical to bump them up to the Massachusetts section versus the Amherst section. I like that. I think that's good. Is any thoughts? It really was a cut and paste. Right. But no wording change, just moving to to uh, create, as think... we say, consistency and yeah. clarity. We don't have a problem with Felicia, do we? I think that's it's fine. Right. Oh, I was on mute. Sorry. No, I'm just fine. And and then my the you know, the last be it further resolved is we always have the clerk of the town council, not the town clerk. Um, and we tend to list it by um, office hierarchy. So governor, then senator, then rep. Um, so that's the only change in the last one. Um, this, my question on the one before that was, it seemed more of a where, whereas clause instead of a resolved clause. All right. Mm. All right. Yeah, that, that also had a question mark in my document. Um, yeah, I agree. It is. I mean, the easiest solution is to just move it to somewhere in the whereas section. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sure. Go for it. Uh, we need <clears throat> we need to get Mandy Joe working on this from the state's perspective. I think. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't take her away from Joe. We're lucky to have her. <laughs> Boy, she's not going anywhere. I don't know where you want it. <laughs> yeah. Mm doesn't matter i don't think is there any place where we're talking about jobs or infrastructure or that kind of stuff uh, low income community let me yeah. see if it works there yeah, yeah it might work there yeah. yeah i think it will too does it work there yeah so, and before that we just talked about um a just right. transition and then the right. effects on community color and then yeah there's other books there and if we could scroll Wait a minute, down. Can, I, uh, can you go back a second, George? Yeah. Can I look at that again, please? I just please. want to see. Um, job as a just by record safe climate is launched. What is that is launched there? What does that say? I'm, I'm <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's as it's done, as it happens. Okay. If you don't have any problem with it, Mandy Jo, uh, you're so much better at this than I am. <laughs> the effort is launched. Yeah, the effort is being launched. Uh, it's interesting to me. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it this way because it, um, you know, we're just asking the state to look at all this and just uh, start thinking about it and doing it. There's a part of me that still wants it in the be it resolved, like, no, make programs, like launch programs so that this happens. Mm -hmm. We're asking the state to do that rather than just say, be it resolved this, you know, whereas we need it. So if you want but, it down there, I would just recommend adding the, we call upon the state legislature. Yeah, state legislature, yeah. And, you know, to whatever it would be, right? Take steps to ensure. To ensure. Yeah. Yeah. That the just transmission is equitable, or yeah, you know, we could reword it if you'd rather have it in the resolved. I just want to think about it, Darcy. Do you have anything you want to say about this in particular? I think that um, considering the the current climate legislation, the omnibus bill, it it needs to be in the resolved. Um, and I, I guess I am missing why we moved it. Um, I can see I can see why we moved it, but I think I, I agree with you. We're trying to push the state legislature forward. We're doing this not just as Amherst. There's I think 12 other cities right now who are on board trying to get resolutions passed because collectively it gives a boost to the legislature to say, move on this, give municipalities more self-determination, do things at the state level. We're getting close to 2025. You know, we, we have to move. We want you to um, 
it has an impact much bigger than our one town has. And as you see from this, most of it isn't asking anything from Amherst really. It's saying mm -hmm. citizens of the state, residents of the state um, are saying- Great, that's great, that. Mandy Jo, what you've done. That looks good to me. <laughs> And I think you know there there are there's ex, there's new legislation, jobs with justice legislation that is exactly what this is talking about. Yes, there is. And we 1972. More people too. More people too. No, that wasn't right now. MD 1972. I mean, sorry. Uh, Whoa, that's pretty good. For HD 1972. Just was just filed. Mm -hmm. So okay, let me so read that's it. the rewording. Yeah, that so I'm, let me read it and let's, let's see what it. people you. think. Be it further resolved, we call upon the Massachusetts State Legislature to, to ensure that a just transition includes the equitable creation and distribution of high quality jobs as the Commonwealth launches the effort to decarbonize our buildings and restore a safe climate. Brilliant. Darcy, Darcy, Darcy. Darcy. Sorry, go ahead, Darcy. Yeah, I. Uh, if we're done with that, I. Uh, are we done with the whole thing? Well, that's uh, what, uh, not yet. Um, I'm asking if, if, first of all, the sponsor is okay with that change, and that it stays in the be for be it for the resolve section. The answer is yes, apparently. I do have one very very small uh, change to make at the very end of the document. It, uh, Mindy Dom is only one person, so it should be representative. Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's all right. So um, the document now has been gone through and we've got the, so Darcy, please go ahead. Yeah, I just very briefly wanted to go back to the second paragraph that where the goals were because it, it seemed, um, uh, it seems like we should say Amherst is committed to a goal of this, this, and this, and carbon neutrality by 2050. And I'm not sure why we need to mention, unless we have a whereas what the Energy and Climate Action Committee is doing. So just end there and carbon neutrality by 2050, semicolon, and, and then strike the remaining clause. So yeah, I, unless you want to add that, you know, the Energy and Climate Action Committee is, will be, Assisting the implementation of the plan or something like that. I don't know. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary because it doesn't really add anything right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does um, conceivably from the perspective of the legislature and the governor, it might just show a little more mass and bulk there mm. uh, from uh, coming from the Amherst side. But I don't, I don't think that's, well, if, if, <laughs> if I thought that that would actually make this thing pass and not, and keep it from passing if it weren't there, uh, I would, that would be different. I probably, this is just fine. I have a question. Should it be the Amherst Town Council has committed or just Amherst? Has the Amherst Town Council committed to that? We're, we're the ones that adopted the climate action goals. Well, right. Yes, absolutely. Bulk. Town Council, more, more bulk, more moist bulk. I would like to end with carbon neutrality by 2050 and either have a separate whereas, um, that would just be, but again, I will bow to the sponsors here. Um, this is their document. And um, if you want to keep that extra George, clause, but, you, go ahead. I'm, I'm, Pat. I have a question and you're saying to keep that the energy and climate action recommends prioritizing as a separate whereas, no. is that what you're saying? Well, I'm suggesting that I'd like to, if you're gonna keep it, I would separate it and have a separate yeah. whereas, um, okay, or you. I would just delete it. I Lisa. think I, I don't want it deleted because prioritizing the planning is something that has to be happening now. I don't mind if it's a separate whereas at all, I think it should be. That sounds I think it should be in there. Okay, fair enough, I mean, that's, that's great. Chief. Uh, and maybe we should say instead of to achieve the the council's goal, the council's goals, yes, because we want them to look at all of those goals, not just 2050. Council goals. Oh. Yeah, town council. <laughs> good, good. 
So the new whereas the town's Energy and Climate Action Committee recommends prioritizing planning to achieve the town council's goals, including net zero emissions by 2050. Um, I would do you want to say my, climate my, action, my, climate action goals? I would take out the including, oh, climate action goals, period. Take out the including net zero. Yeah. Because it's redundant. Well, because it sounds like that's the only, that's the main priority, which it isn't. Excuse um, me. And do you, you want to take out also by 2050? Darcy, could you lower your hand? And... Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I did, didn't I? Uh, I was going to say, why, 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 why not keep it in? Um, why not keep 2050 in? Because it's not just 2050. It's 2030 and 2025, too. Uh, okay, just, sorry. No. It refers back to the previous, whereas. Mm -hmm. Would you like to keep it, Darcy, or no? I would not like to keep it. Good. Then the sponsors are in agreement. Fine. So we'll leave it as it is. And that's semicolon and and. Fine. All no right. Semicolon. There's yeah, no there. semicolon. Yeah. There. yeah, it it's is. There. It's after 50. It's right here. It's there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. All right. So anything else? I don't see any hands. I don't see any waving. I don't see hear any voices. But Chris? Can you put it, uh, to, uh, take the formatting away so we can just see it as a clean text? Um, Mandy, please. Let's... Let me know when to scroll. Oh, I'm, I wonder, I don't know. I, I think the only reason I might have said that was because I plan to read it all, but I don't plan to read it all. So that was all. <laughs> it, look, it looks fine to me. <laughs> It is easier to see those two paragraphs like this right. than with all the <laughs> things. It might still, oh, I think we go on to three pages. Oh, well, we can't three, do it. You know what? Page, That's right? fine. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Patricia. <laughs> I, hey, I sponsored the abortion rights thing. And, I and think that was like five pages, pages at least. Yeah, so. Yeah. All, right. all right. Well. So I am prepared to entertain a motion, unless there's any further comment or discussion. I move that GOL recommend, is this the language? We well, we, that we declare. We declare it clear, consistent, and actionable. Right, that's what we do. Um, I move that we declare a resolution calling for swift, just building decarbonization in the Commonwealth clear, consistent, and actionable. actionable. Second, DeAngelis. Okay. And I've just lost my screen. Yep. That's all right. Um, hopefully I'll get it back. So I'm prepared to move to a vote. Uh, we'll start with uh, Pat. Aye. Uh, Darcy. Yes. Uh, Mandy. Aye. The chair is an aye. Sarah. Aye. All right, the motion carries unanimously 5-0. Um, so uh, thank you very much, sponsors, for being present. Um, hey, thank you. How, uh, how can we get a copy of this latest draft? Um, um, uh, to, to Chris. <laughs> Pardon? So Mandy will send you a copy when she sends one to me, and she'll also send it. I think she almost always she sends it to Athena as well. So when she sends it to the council clerk, she will also send it to... Um, to you to felicia and chris yeah yeah i'll i'll if i don't have i know i have your email chris if i don't have felicia's i'll get it from darcy or chris okay or you Thanks. Just, and you're going to send it as a docx file are you yep. so that ordinary mortals can use it yes <laughs> thank you thank you all very much you. you're thank welcome you. very much thank okay. you very much take care so we're prepared to move on to item number three which is the tibet Day proclamation. Um, we have the sponsor present, Saring Dundup. And um, so Mandy is going to put the proclamation up on the screen for us all to see. And um, okay. Saring, if you would be uh, good enough to unmute. Um, so as we go through this, I, I, 
I imagine you were present through this <laughs> past 15, 20 minutes. So you see how we work. Um, and so the first thing is the sponsors. And my understanding is the council sponsors are uh, Shalini Ball Milne, Pat DeAngelis, Lynn Griesemer, and Dorothy Pam. The community sponsor is regional, the, the or just Regional Tibetan Association of Massachusetts, and Mr. Saring Dundup, president. Is that acceptable to you um, as the sponsor? Yes. Good. Okay. So, um, and then we're just going to go through this um, whereas by whereas. Um, and, uh, Mandy, do we bold these or not? The we normally do. Do you want me to? Uh, we could also, we'll do that later. I mean, you've got- I'll, I'll just work through it. Okay. So um, I had no, I read through this. I had, uh, the only concerns I had were with the, the now therefore, uh, with the be it resolved at the very end. There um, is one correction in the third, go. whereas that Mandy Good. made, which is a semicolon after law. Okay. Yeah, I, I changed the semicolon to a comma, and in the second whereas, I added a, the, the Oxford comma in. Um, Thank yeah. you. All right, fine. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Pat. Oh, and um, I added a comma in the fourth one after 2020. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I didn't see that one. Yeah. And then I think there was another comma. The Let, let me... This one here there was a sentence, the 1 billion people in Asia and then China. So I just added a comma instead of the period. That was just a minor correction. Thank you. And then I had a question on the next two. Yeah, there's the typo there. The typo, I, it's monk instead of month. That's an easy one in a sense. But what I had a question for um, Zarin is, um, is the last two months, because we do this every year, what I don't remember is, was that last year's, or it was in the last two months this it's year. Not, it's okay. not. It's uh, Tenzin was uh, died in January 2021 and okay. in February 2021. That's what I just wasn't sure of. Um, I'm sorry. So it was just a question. Okay. Okay. All right. And I capitalized town. Yep. Yeah. And the last one's a period instead of an and. Okay. You know, I, I have a small wonder. I don't know why f for reading at this time, uh, where the, the town of Amherst is home to a small vibrant community. Somehow or other, I'd love to take the small out and just, it's a vibrant community of Tibetan Americans. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's never bothered me before, so I don't, it's not a major thing, but. Nope, it's gone. <laughs> okay, so um, the, the final, the therefore, now therefore, um, be hereby resolved that we, the town council of the town of Amherst, we usually don't say in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but we can recognize the local Tibetan American community's plea for justice for the people of Tibet on this 62nd anniversary of Tibetan National Uprising Day and continue to proclaim. Um, Didn't an anniversary be lowercase a? Um, Looks like, I don't know, it seems like it should be. Upper. I was going to suggest that the focus here should be on the proclamation. So I was going to suggest up above to say in recognition of the local Tibetan American community's plea for justice for the people of Tibet on the 62nd anniversary of Tibetan National Uprising Day, comma, we proclaim so each time we do it, it's, oh, it's, yeah. I'm just suggesting each time. So it's it, we proclaim March 10 as Tibet Day is what I'm going to suggest um, and take away the each. So and and so we proclaim. Actually, it should just be proclaimed. There's no we. You're right, Andy. Yeah. 
proclaim March 10, 2021 as Tibet Day and further either call for or simply hoist or raise. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which would be better. Do, do we, Mandy, do you think that something we, we're basically calling on the town to do something? We actually don't raise the flag. Um, well, let me but, see what I didn't get a chance to do. Um, let me check out last year's pride. It's, it's, it's the same language last year. Yeah, it okay. is. Well, I'm, I'm wondering about the pride one. Okay, all right. If I'm, you've got the pride one handy, good for you. I would take me 20 let me minutes. Let see if I can pull it up. <laughs> I might have it here somewhere in my. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I've got 2020's pride and courage all right, and recognize this proclamation by hoisting the pride flag is, is the phrase used there. Okay, so and further by hoisting the Tibetan national flag, fine. Let's so just we could say there. recognize this proclamation by and no, further okay. recognize. Uh, Let me. Uh, okay. Okay, recognize this proclamation and further recognize this proclamation Good. by hoisting the Tibetan national flag from March 10 to March 20, 2021 to help exactly to help cultivate awareness for all residents of Amherst. Or just cultivate awareness. Yeah, that's right. right. Good. Good. Do we want the help in there or not? Um, I think it, it is a help. In other words, it, yeah. this is, is, this is one these are a number of different things we're doing all meant right, to help right. cultivate awareness. So I think the help is fine. Sharing any thoughts on your part? Is this acceptable to you as a sponsor? Yes, it is. Uh, it, it looks um, pretty good now. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank it you was very good to begin with, but thank you. Um, we just, that's great. So um, good. So I don't see any any other comments or concerns from other members of the committee or from the sponsors. Not seeing any, I'm prepared to entertain a motion. Pat, would you like to make the motion? I move that the 2021 Tibet Day Proclamation is clear, clear consistent, and actionable. Second. So we have a motion. We have it seconded. Um, I'm going to move immediately to a vote, and this time I'm going to start with uh, with Darcy. Yes. And then uh, Sarah. Aye. And the chair is an aye. Pat. Aye. And Mandy. Uh, aye. Very good. Okay. Again, the motion is declared clear. Excuse me. The proclamation is declared clear, consistent, actionable Sorry. by unanim no. unanimous vote. Okay. All right, and Sharing George, yeah, please, Mandy. Um, I do not have um, Sarin's email, so when I forward it to you, can you just forward it on to him? I will. I will Thank do you. that. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Sarin, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Next item is rule of procedure 6.3D. Um, and the chair should be able, hopefully, to find that. Um, it's going to take him a while. Um, you want me uh, to pull it up? No, I'm, let me try this, Mandy. Be patient here. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it's the one, I think this is it. Um, I've got two of them in my. Uh, I want to make sure I get the right one. Yeah, I think it is. You'll correct me if I'm mistaken. So I'm going to go, this is 6.3 B. Um, try not to get dizzy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I haven't shown you it to you. You haven't shared yet. yet. I'm, I'm good. I want to get it. Good. Good. This is what we want. So I'm going to, um, oh. all right, come back here. Share screen. And that's what I want. So you should see on your screen. Could you enlarge it, George? I will do that. I will do Thank that. Thank you. So um, you where did that draft focus ribbon sidebar left? Oh, okay. Okay. Why does it want to hang out for a second?
All right. Zoom. Okay. Zoom. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Zoom to me means Zoom. The. Uh... <laughs> uh, all right. Is that better, Pat, or would you like it more? No, that's fine. Thank you very okay. much. That's good. Okay. So um, we have in front of us a, this um, wording has proved to be somewhat problematic. I have a suggestion here, but um, let's look first at what um, Mandy has given us too. She's given us, first of all, essentially the original language, of, which is D in front of you, and then an alternate E, which is language suggested by Councillor um, Brewer. Um, and yeah. Can, can I clarify something with that? Please go I ahead, think Amanda. I put it in the notes. The E would replace D. There, there's yeah. two right. exactly. alternates for, right. for D, exactly. essentially. Yeah. But Councilor Brewer also made the suggestion, as I put in the notes, to remove the charter right to postpone from hers completely. Um, she actually didn't have that in her suggested language. I put it in there so that they mirrored each other in content at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a suggestion regarding the charter right to postpone language that would move it in Councillor Brewer's section from two to one. Can, Go ahead, Pat. I, well, I, <laughs> the more I look at this, I don't mean to cause problems, but it seems to me the right to postpone, I don't see why that has to be an interruption. If I'm speaking and Mandy wants to postpone, she can wait till I'm done without affecting anything. It just says we're gonna do this later. But in terms of, um, to call the previous question, that seems to me to, uh, is, that is an interruption that needs to be there. Um, so in some ways I'd like to reverse where they are. It's not important, but it just- no, I, I guess Pat, are you saying that if I'm speaking in my three minutes during that speech, someone should be able to interrupt my speech and call the question or should they have to just wait till I end my talk? Because, and I ask, because right now the way Councillor Brewer's suggestion is and the way we proposed it is um, calling the question cannot be in the middle of someone's three minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, they have to wait till the end, but but they can do it at the end of that three minutes when someone's stopped. Yeah, no, I hear you. And that's probably better. But then why is the right to postpone? Uh, can Why can that be an interruption? Why can't? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Councilor Brewer wanted it out completely. And I went back and read the charter. And I actually agree with you that that should probably be moved to what is listed here as E1, um, not interrupt, but speak without recognition, to claim it without needing recognized, as, yeah. which is actually the practice we've had when it has been asserted. Right. They have asserted it without recognition. Right. So, so it doesn't have to go through raising your hand, waiting till you're called on, blah, blah, blah. But Right. So I'm going to suggest or offer as an option having two E and F, or I guess it would be D and E, um, and separating out. The, the issue seems to be around two questions. When can you interrupt a colleague? Okay. And when can you speak without recognition? Right. So if we had an item which addressed that issue first, so when can you um, interrupt a colleague? You can interrupt a colleague only when what? To raise a point of order. Right. To raise a question of, uh, of privilege. privilege. So, yeah. so the, the other thing that I didn't put into this is right. those two items, along with about three other items under Robert's rules, already allow you to interrupt a colleague. So that portion of the rule does not change Robert's rules. It just makes it more known to counselors. And that becomes another question since we default to Robert's rules, those two things are already allowed even if we remove them from the rules. So it's a question of, do we want them in here to alert counselors that they can interrupt colleagues? Um, or do we wanna streamline our rules to not include things that are not changing Robert's rules? 
I guess what I'm, yeah. I, I'd love to hear from Sarah because she's good at this, but yeah, you don't yeah, have please. to talk. So I guess what I'm thinking is that um, I feel like we don't, yeah, although like Robert's rules we default to, I, I feel like there's an issue of civility that I, I don't think it's just Alyssa that's um, had an issue with, but I, I think that as much as we can make it clear that we're not out of hand um, interrupting someone, I think we need to make that clear because I do think that there is an issue where, you know, we've limited it to what we have the two minutes and then the three minutes. I, I think somebody needs to be able to say what they need to be able to say. We've limited how long they can um, pontificate on that. But I don't know that we want to encourage, um, I don't know how to say this, like blatant interrupting, where it makes it really clear that one counselor is trying to make a point, and if they're making it for the first time and no one else has, then I feel like it's, it, it's dismissive and rude to have someone just like you, it's obvious that like say the second counselor who's interrupting is hearing the first counselor say something and it's obvious they don't even want to hear it. So they interrupt to right. call the question. Like, I, I think that it, right. I think right. that we want to, and even though it seems sort of, I don't know, silly to put it in, I think that we want to say like, if, so, if a counselor is making a point, they're limited to however many minutes, but they should be able to make it before someone then says, okay, now I want to call the question. Um, point of order is different, but calling the question, I think you've no, got to no. let somebody get their point across right. before you're like, and yeah, no thanks. So what, what if it said counselors may only interrupt a colleague? So the, the first one says you shall not interrupt a colleague. Uh, excuse me. The first one would say you may speak without recognition to do, right? So if you said counselors may only interrupt a colleague to raise a point of order or to raise a question of privilege. Why isn't that sufficient in terms of at least, because I agree with, with Sarah, and I think I'm hearing this from a number of you that, and we have not done this. This is not, I, I don't believe in two years, anyone has ever done something like this. And all we're doing is making it clear that given our understanding of how we proceed as a body, um, it is simply against the rules to interrupt a colleague, except to raise a point of order or to raise a question of privilege. We'll leave aside the charter right for a moment. Why shouldn't that be a, a separate like E or D or something, right? And then the other would be, um, you shall not speak without recognition except, right? Um, right, to doubt the presence of a quorum or call the previous question. Um, so is, is that, if you insert it only, would that solve the problem or is that not? A solution. So we could own... go back to the D language yeah. that starts with counselors shall not interrupt a colleague except to raise a point of order, or we could change it or to express a point of personal privilege, period. And then a new E that right. says counselors shall not speak without recognition except to doubt the presence of a quorum, call the previous question, or assert the charter right to postpone. That's what I would suggest. And does that, that doesn't create a problem with Robert's rules and it makes it clear what our um, rules are and makes, I think, the point that a number of you are making, including Sarah, which is we don't want people interrupting someone while they're speaking, um, except in extremely rare circumstances that we all would acknowledge are, are acceptable, but otherwise not. So why not a D uh, and then E would be um, address the issue of speaking without recognition. What I would go for that because it, oh, I'm sorry, George. You said yeah, to just talk. Here I am just talking. But I think that it, it makes our rules clear. I think, and I think that it makes it more clear what we feel that as a town council, our, our culture is around right. speaking to each right. other. But I think it still um, protects our rights as counselors to, you know, call a point of order or, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would be amenable to that. So um, looks like Darcy has her hand raised. Darcy, please go ahead. Oh, thank you. 
Yeah, um, I, I wasn't part of the initial discussion on this, so I'm not sure what you've already discussed. Um, and I, I, um, I think I agree with what you're saying about not interrupting counselors, but I wondered if you had discussed um, whether, um, whether we want to add something to calling the question to, to ensure that it is not used to prevent debate. We discussed that at our last meeting, I believe it was, and one of the, because I brought up a similar point that I didn't like it as a strategy. And it seems to me, and George, I, George you might have said this, that if it became a strategy, we could go back. Um, so I don't think it needs um, to be changed. But if it, yeah, Darcy? If it's used, um, if there has been zero discussion or debate, um, a counselor has a right to do that. Uh, and and, and again, if it became something that was a regular habit, I would say that that it would be problematic. Well, the counselors have a right to do it under Robert's rules, but I'm just saying that we could make a rule. I don't want to. That yeah, I, I think, Darcy, the, the point is if someone does make that motion, it, the council then gets to decide. So if the council is a body really wants to have a debate on something, they can vote to do yeah. that. Um, right. And if they don't, where, they can vote. Where would, where would there ever be a situation where we would not want to debate? We just had one. Yeah. And a majority of the councillors did not want to debate, and they voted so. You may not have liked that vote. I'm not sure I liked it completely, though I did vote for it. Um, it was a decision made by the councillors that they did not wish to have debate on this measure, and a supermajority voted that way. So I think I had your initial reaction, and then I thought about it some more, and I thought, you know, in the end, it really should be a decision by those 13 individuals if right. they want to have debate on this or not. And it has to be a supermajority. It's not just a simple majority. And we did have one instance, and I understand why some people were not happy about it, um, but I don't think a rule requiring debate um, before you can uh, move the question, or call the question, uh, would be, I would not support that. Um, Mandy has her hand up also, George. Mandy, please go ahead. I was just gonna suggest, I've made the changes in my copy, George, if you want me to. Uh, why don't you, I'm gonna, so people can see them. I'm gonna yeah. type this in, so. But um, before I do that, I'm going to, Darcy, you wanted to make a point. So go ahead, please. Yeah, I, ju I just, my point is that in th the majority on a particular issue, the people who are the pros on a particular issue um, could prevent people who have the opposite opinion from discussing an issue in, in the public I. Um, and so it, it just seems like the only situation where I can see that there would be situations where it would be appropriate to do that, where, um, for example, council already had a discussion at the same meeting. They had the discussion before the motion, which we sometimes do. Um, so that would make sense because we could say, OK, we already we already discussed this. Um, that would make sense to call the question there, but I guess I just feel like it's really not good to prevent discussion if it hasn't been done had at all. It can't prevent discussion unless there are nine counselors who are supporting it. And, or if nine counselors support a continuing debate, that is what happens. I don't think there's any need to change anything here in relation to what you're saying. Um, I'm gonna put the wording change in so we can look at it. Uh, yeah. We can come back to this. I think it's a separate issue. Uh, what Darcy's suggesting is introducing a further rule um, and we can come back to that and, and discuss it some more. But let me first focus on uh, the initial question of getting this clear and it sounds like we might have a consensus at least with this specific point and then I'm going to come back uh, to the larger or the other issue of, of whether you want to require debate as a rule so Mandy if you bear with us for a second um, yeah. so D how do you have it written so it counselors D would read counselors shall not interrupt a colleague except to raise a point of order 
and then you're going to delete the comma and add the word or to raise instead of express it's raise right. a question of privilege instead of point of personal privilege and mandy this is because it's used this language is used somewhere else the question of privilege language is used in rule seven okay. in our motion order of whatever um and then the rest of that the rest of that is deleted right is deleted yeah right. and when you yeah So D would read, counselors shall not interrupt a colleague except to raise a point of order or to raise a question of privilege. Okay. And then E. And e would read, counselors shall not speak without recognition except, and then you delete everything to the word two in number one. Yep. And keep the two. Yep. So you have to add in, I think, the except. Recognition okay. in the word except. shall not speak without recognition except to doubt the presence of a quorum or to call the previous question. Put the put the comma in to doubt the presence of a quorum, comma to call the previous question. Okay. You, you can delete the or right. and then after question say comma or and then delete everything up to to assert the charter right to postpone. Okay. All right. So let's look at this for a moment before we go back to the other issue. Um, I think this addresses the concerns of Councilor Brewer. I hope it does. Um, I think it, it makes it very clear to um, uh, us as uh, members of the Council that we should never interrupt a coll colleague except in these two cases, and that we should never speak without recognition except in the case of doubting the presence of quorum, calling the previous question or asserting the charter right to postpone. So I think this is much clearer and hopefully would meet with Councilor Brewer's approval. Um, the question about charter right to postpone, can we address that briefly? Mandy, you've included it. Uh, Councilor Brewer wanted to delete it. Can you give us the argument for why we should include it? So, um... The, the simplest argument is that's how we've done it <laughs> traditionally in the times it has been asserted. So, so the charter right to postpone is a charter thing. We can't stop someone from asserting the right and it needs to under the charter be asserted at the time of vote or earlier. Um, and in our practice of voting, when we start voting, we either start raising hands or we go through a roll call. So if you're not the first person on the roll call, you almost have to. Right, you, know, you have to speak without recognition. Without recognition or yeah. somehow figure out a way to get the chair's, you know, the, the presiding yeah. officer's attention yeah. as they're starting to do a roll call. Um, so it makes sense to me to add it in to speak without recognition. I think I, I did air last time when, when I suggested it be in interrupt a colleague, that doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Had Despite more that. problems with the interrupting of a colleague than the speaking without recognition on that one. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and I can't think of any reason that I'm aware of where you would take it out because, it's, as you point out, it's it's there. It's a, it's a fact. And in fact, we do have it have exercised it. So um, good. Any further thoughts about these two changes? Because I would like to. Um, actually entertain a motion on this. And then, as I said, we'll go back to the, whether we want to introduce a further rule, um, but can, uh, any other thoughts? Because otherwise I'd like to have a motion. Um, can I just say one thing quick, Please, George? Sarah, go ahead, yeah. Just that I, I just want to say out loud that I think the reason why um, Councilor Brewer wanted to take that out is because I think that she's feeling a little bit about this um, the same way that Darcy feels about, you know, being able to call a question without debate mm -hmm. is that it can, it's sort of a, a nuclear option, which is a, a weird thing to say, I guess, when I say it out loud, and right. that it's something that could be abused, which I understand, but I also think that um, GOL has decided, and I also feel this way, that um, it's a, it's an extreme measure that that does need to to be there, but I, I guess I just wanted to, to point out why I think why there's to it. Okay. 
And these changes don't address that. That's something that is, she will, she can raise at the council meeting. I don't see there's any way we can address it, um, no. given the fact that, that this right does exist. And all we're saying is that when you exercise this right, um, you are permitted to do it without recognition for the reasons that Mandy stated, that you could be hindered from exercising this right simply by the roll of the dice, by the fact that you're not the first person called upon or the council president just doesn't notice you. Um, and that would seem to be- um, Agreed. In, in, all right, okay, good. Um, so I'm prepared to entertain a motion. Um, the motion would be that um, to accept changes to rule point, well, actually it's- To recommend. To recommend, how are we gonna do it? Because we've really created two separate- yeah. So, you know, so here, I'll, I'll try to craft something. Thank you, Mandy. Um, to recommend that rule that the council adopt the so to recommend the council adopt a revision to rule 6.3 that deletes everything after point of order and adds the phrase or to raise a question of privilege, period. And to add a section E and renumber accordingly the following phrase. Counselors shall not speak without recognition except to doubt the presence of a quorum, comma, to call the previous question, comma, or to assert the charter right to postpone, period. So to our noble note taker, and to our, um, do you need that repeated? So yeah, I had a few. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> agenda, I knew I would have to have it repeated, but. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> no, okay, so let me, can I read Please what read I have? Please read what you I, have, exactly. Thank you, read that. Okay, have. so what yeah. I have is, because I, I got lost somewhere, but um, to recommend that the council adopt a revision to rule 6.3, that deletes everything after point of order and adds the phrase or to raise a question of privilege and to add a section E. And that's where I kind of lost it. So, so let's go back just one step. I think you want to insert D. D. So oh, 6.3D, so okay. D, and so, right. And then, good. And then you, at what point you were lost was where? Um, um, and to add a section E. And that's basically then, um, uh, just quoting the entire phrase that's there. Counselors shall not speak, right? So just from the screen without okay, recognition. I just, okay, I just, yeah, the, the whole entire uh, Yeah, and, and then the only other thing was then to renumber or re-letter accordingly. Re-letter re okay. 6.3 accordingly. So if you take a moment, if you want to read that back one last time, that's fine, because um, this is a little tricky. Um, okay, so to recommend that the council adopt a revision to rule 6.3D that deletes everything after point of order and adds the phrase or to raise a question of privilege and to add a section E and then I'll just insert that. Exactly. Section e, and to renumber accordingly. Reletter. Reletter, sorry. That's all right, that's great, that's perfect. Okay. Very good. So that is the motion, the... Um, the clerk has the motion and um, is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. DeAngelis seconds, thank you. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Any further comment or discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to proceed directly to vote. And this time I'm gonna start with Sarah. And that's an aye. An aye, Darcy. Yes. Uh, the chair is an aye, Pat. Aye. And Mandy. Aye. Very good. So again, the motion carries unanimously 5-0. Um, thank you all. All right, the next item on the agenda is a uh, discussion item. And uh, we, Darcy, please go ahead. Before we move on, um, yep. I just, um, I, I do, well, you know, I'm interested to know if there's anybody else on the committee who agrees with me that there should be an added section about- ah, thank you, I'm sorry. 
And so I the <laughs> yes. section about what, Darcy? I'm sorry. Uh, the, la the section that I would like to add um, would say something like, counselors shall not call the previous question unless counselors have had the opportunity to debate the topic earlier in the same meeting. So I'm just interested to know if there's anybody else on the committee who thinks that would be an important thing to add. Well, Darcy, you can make that motion and we can then discuss it, but we can also do it informally. I, I don't, uh, either one is fine. Um, let's do informal at first. Um, I'm anyone? just asking if anybody else right. agrees with me and if they don't, then it's probably not worth putting a motion forward. Well, Darcy, I'd like to say how thrown I was when Evan called the question that quickly. It was not something that was easy for me but on pondering it and thinking about it, I think that, that it's legitimate. And as I said earlier to you, is that in the previous meeting, I discussed that if it became a strategy that happened frequently, mm -hmm. that it would be problematic. But I don't, I don't see a need to add what you're saying. Could you the whole point is to stop um, debate and and in some ways we need to trust the integrity of counselors to use that appropriately. Could you explain what your thought process was that allowed you to then decide it was a reasonable idea? I'm not gonna share that. Yeah, I think that's inappropriate, um, quite frankly. Um, I think the larger question is a good one, Darcy, and it's not an easy one, but I don't think it's appropriate to ask a particular counselor why they voted a particular way at a particular vote. Um, so, I mean, you can do it, but I don't think it's appropriate. Um, but it is appropriate to ask whether we are want to inter, uh, create a rule that would require debate um, before someone could call the question. And um, that's the question, that's the, what you've asked to see if others support that. Um, and at the moment, it seems the answer is no, um, but asking people why they voted a particular way in a particular vote seems to me not appropriate. You mean as happened at the town council meeting? Well, I assume that's what you're, I mean, you could ask me why I you know, voted for so-and-so to be the uh, MVP for a particular team, but I assume what you're interested in are my votes as a counselor. So I think that's not appropriate, um, at least in a public forum like this, but anyway. Can I just say that I, I think and until this occasion came up in which this actually happened, Right. Um, I don't, I think I probably would stand where Darcy's standing right now, but I think in real life, being a counselor, I have seen a situation where um, sometimes um, some sorts of debate are either hurtful or inappropriate and do not further the justice or the betterment of the decision that we make. So that changed my mind. But I, I think that in seeing a situation where um, I wouldn't want debate on something, I think that we should keep this here. And then I think that the point has been made that this shouldn't be used strategically. Um, I haven't seen it done. I can't imagine it being done. If it happened, I think the optics would be horrible if it was something like say, we somebody called the question on the library. That would be absolutely horrific, and it certainly wouldn't be furthering um, the the justice of that cause. So um, that's what I'm going to say about it. Is that there's I guess sometimes an exception to a rule, and I think that this shows why we need to have that rule. Well, Darcy, what I'm seeing is that there doesn't seem to be support on the committee for um, a possible motion to this effect. Um, I'd be happy to mention this in, in the uh, report to the council um, uh, that this came up in discussion um, so that at least it's on the record and other counselors can see it. And if they have thoughts, they can, they can speak to it. Um, the other way to do that, of course, is to actually have an actual motion, but um, um, I don't think that's necessary. I can certainly put this in the discussion of the rule 6.3D. Um, and mention it as a, something that came up and briefly 
present your concern and then note that um, there wasn't a consensus to proceed and no motion was made. All right, um, we have, uh, I have review of calendar draft. I'm, I'm not even gonna put it, well, actually I could put it up on the screen um, just briefly, um, but uh, Mandy- I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I just want you to see it. Um, I appreciate Mandy going through it and um, if I can find it quickly, you never find things when you want them. Um, there it is. Thank you. So bear with me. Put you away. Put you away. I save that. Okay. screen. I believe that's it right there. So should be able to see this, hopefully. Um, I'll scroll up just a bit so we can see it. That's so at the moment, this is what we have um, as our proclamation calendar. We just acted on Tibet Day. Um, and at the moment, uh, things look quiet. Um, I don't know whether we'll get an Arbor Month proclamation. I don't know if we'll get a Child Awareness Day proclamation or an Art Week proclamation or a Southeast Asian Heritage Month proclamation. Um, I guess one question would be, what role, if any, do we have in soliciting these. In the past, we have not. We have been reactive, not proactive. Um, and maybe that's the way we should continue to be. Um, so this is what our schedule looks like at the moment. Are we missing? So the question for you all is whether we're missing anything um, or and or if you have any thoughts about what role we should play in soliciting um, proclamations. Um, if any, the answer might be, you know, we don't have a role to play, but once proclamations um, are presented to us, um, we then kick into gear. Okay, Mandy, please. Yeah, I, just a couple of changes to this that I think we should add the 10th to Tibet day. So we know that it's March 10 um, to the LBGT, Q1, we should put month down so we know it's a full month. So, so the proclamation is the LB, it's Pride Month or LBGTQ month, right? Okay. Pat? Right. Yes. Uh, and the month is June. It should be and, uh, year long, but hey, what the? <laughs> That'd be greedy. Okay. All right. <laughs> LGBT and, month. Okay. Yes. And in September, I think it's Puerto Rico Heritage Day or Puerto Rican Heritage Day. I don't know which one. It is heritage. But it is I... heritage. And we celebrate, I don't know whether it's a day or a month, but we celebrate it on the 23rd. So just a little more clarity on those things. Okay. Um, in terms of to answer your question, um, I think there's something in the middle, right? If we do it month, if we, if we have some of these that are traditional, um, you could almost say GOL starts sponsoring them. Just, to, you know, it's on a oh. GOL calendar and GOL becomes the sponsor so that it's just a traditional, it happens every year and all. Um, others, there's generally community sponsors and if they're on top of it, I guess my thing is if they're on top of it, we'll hear and we'll get the request from the president to have a counselor sponsor well in advance. If the community sponsors forget for some reason or aren't quite on top of it and we're like oh Tibet Day is coming up in March and we haven't received it yet under our rules maybe we should just as a committee be the quote sponsor. Um, I'm uncomfortable with that but I, I guess I like the idea of something in the middle. I, I, I'm uncomfortable with us being the sponsor. Of, I think these should definitely come from um, 
uh, the community uh, and with a, an appropriate council sponsor, but I'm not sure I'd like to make GOL the sponsor. Um, thoughts on that? I'm, I'm a little reluctant with that. I'm thinking that maybe the chair should be tasked with and working with Jen. I mean, Jen's fantastic. So, you know, just saying to the chair, whoever the chair may be, you know, here's the calendar, you know, you should be in touch with, with, with uh, Jen um, in, on a regular basis just to see what's in the pipeline and, and keep the line of communications open. I think what happens often is we get things at the last minute. You know, somebody says, oh yeah, what about so-and-so? And so they, and then we get it and it's gotta be done, you know, next week or tomorrow. And it's, we do it, but it's, it's somewhat, um, you know, last minute-y. Um, so maybe it's the chair's responsibility to keep track of this, be in communication with Jen. Um, I guess the question is, should the chair then or some member of GOL also be tasked with reaching out to some of these bodies? I mean, like Arbor Day, I assume that's not Jen's, you know, um, right? The Shade Tree uh, Commission, probably. I'm sorry? That's probably the Shade Tree Commission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe the <laughs> next, I'm sorry, Pat. No, go ahead, George. Well, maybe the next step for the chair is for him having gotten through the help of you all a sort of hopefully a fairly exhaustive list is to then identify the sponsors. Um, and in many cases, it would be, Jen would be the contact person, certainly for Black History Month, MLK, Chinese New Year, um, Tibet Day, I assume, though, Pat, you've been involved in this a lot. Um, Southeast Asian Heritage Month, I, I assume that's gonna be through Jen. Um, Right. Um, so anyway, go through and identify the contact person um, and then reach out to them, you know, a month or so in advance to just make sure that, that we're on their radar um, so we know what's coming. George, um, I'm going to use Tibet Day as an example. I have been sponsoring it since the council started. Right. But it was because the community asked for a sponsor, not right. I didn't generate it. Right. Exactly. Um, and it seems to me the one concern I have about making this sort of automatic pilot is our, to make sure that we reach out to the community. Mm -hmm. I know that the gentleman who spoke today didn't have a lot to say, but he might have in another instance. So I think um, I don't want it to become by rote, I, um, I, I guess is what I'm saying. I think but that always the community yeah. sponsor is contacted. Right, right. And that they be invited to be here, and so yeah. even if and they decide not to, they feel in, in, they feel welcome, they feel connected. Right. And there's Hopefully. still a council sponsor who exactly. can carry right. the weight. Right. So maybe what I need to do is taking this list, um, uh, then add uh, you know the contact, um, and then show it to you again, and we can refine it. And because um, I do think with Pat that it's important that there be this constant connection, even though we do it every year. There is that human connection and invitation. Um, the larger, qu another question is down below that Mandy has put in here, which is, you know, what do we recommend to the council going forward? I'm not saying we need to talk about it today, but I think we should come back to it. And we certainly can start thinking about it today. Um, you know, what do we recommend to the council? Because I, I, again, this idea of rote, uh, I kind of share Pat's perspective that, you know, this is an opportunity for a community to be recognized publicly. And if it's just on the uh, consent agenda, it has this sort of pro forma rote aspect. And so we're caught between the desire to get our meetings under control in terms of time, but also this sort of performative, um, you know, sort of public uh, aspect of our job, um, giving people, you know, connection to us and to the larger community in a public forum. So reading them out loud or acknowledging them seems to be an important function of what we do. Um, it's clearly much more. Uh, I think impactful when people are physically present and they can be recognized and, and so on, the human, that is really important. We can't do that right now. Do we wanna do, so I think at some point, maybe not today, but at some point, I think we wanna take up some of these questions that Mandy's put here at the bottom and, and see if we have anything we wanna to recommend to the council in terms of how to proceed, um, what the rule, what, what sort of our practice should be. So any thoughts on that, either now or do you, something you want to have on the agenda coming soon to continue this discussion? When I bring back this list with contacts and so forth, we could then make it an item to discuss um, what do we think should be our practice as a council.
Shepard. Uh, Darcy, please. Yeah, uh, I like this list. I think that one nice thing about it is that um, if we already have the previous um, proclamations from the previous years, we actually will be able to skip the process of going through them line by line, uh, which takes up a lot of time. And uh, although there'll be, you know, some changes. Mm -hmm. but, um, and I agree that we need to, to, if we're going to do them, we should do them in a way that honors the sponsors and that we could do something like have the have the community sponsor read the proclamation during the meeting instead of us um, so that they are featured. So this is at a council meeting, you would suggest having that be, being read is what yeah. you're suggesting, yeah. yeah. Now, again, the argument against that or one is the idea of time. Imagine, you know, like the proclamation today, that is the decarbonization proclamation. And we have some that are, you know, really lengthy. Um, so again, this is something we can talk about next time. But I, I, I like the idea of it having read, but then some of these are two or three pages and it's just time. Um, so, and, um, but anyway, that I- One of the things that the council yeah. is gonna to have to come to grips with is increasing the number of meetings that we have because the proclamation issue aside, it is very difficult to get work done in two sessions a month. And you know maybe we need to go back to this idea of a work session where votes aren't taken or things like that. Mm -hmm. That would, I think, open up some room for the reading of proclamations. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. there's no point to them if there isn't kind of a public yeah, exactly. Component. Exactly. And, yeah, and I, I, you know, I'm going back to when the, um, la I think it was last year, maybe the year before, because of COVID, it's hard to know, mm -hmm. uh, with the Tibetan Day, when the, the Tibetan community invited Tibetans from DC from the or larger organization. And it was extraordinarily moving to have them, or at least for me, in, in the council room with us. Now, we can't have them in the council room but it's that same kind of quality that is part of our job is to um, yeah. allow for emotionality and connection yes. in terms yes. of these things, I think. Yes, no, I think you're right. And giving people a sense that they're heard and they're recognized is extremely yeah. important. Mm -hmm. Now, was it Melrose? Maybe at one of the communities mentioned last meeting, they actually have a physical document. Now that's cost money and I know, but there you're not reading it, but you know, you actually give them something. Um, and I wonder if we could, ex I mean, again, money's an issue, but we could explore a way in which, um, you know, at least in some circumstances, these proclamations are printed out or in some kind of physical form uh, signed by the counselors and then presented to a representative of the group. Maybe that is too much, but again, that then it's not read, but it's a physical copy that the group is recognized and is public. Um, so that's another option. Mandy? So what Melrose does is they do a photo op during the council meeting. So after mm -hmm. it passes, they have the representative of the, you know, the community sponsor there with the formal pretty, you know, folio stamped mm -hmm. or whatever. And mm -hmm. the council and the sponsors stand in front of what would be our council sort of table and, and thing with a photo op. And then that can go on a web page or a Facebook page or something that says, here's the proclamation. You could put the proclamation there, but you've got a nice photo mm -hmm. of the counselors with the thing to mm -hmm. it. And a photo op doesn't take as long as reading sometimes two or three pages. Right, right. And I think has more lasting impact. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that's something I think we could consider going forward. We're not gonna decide today, but it's something we could consider recommending to the council. I think what I'm hearing, and please raise your hand or just speak up, is a sort of desire to pursue this um, and a recognition, as Pat has stated, I think that there's a public aspect here that's important that we need to, need to acknowledge and somehow incorporate into our practice. And the consent agenda uh, isn't, isn't really cutting it for this particular issue, and we, we'd like to explore it some more. Okay. So I'm gonna tentatively put that on the agenda for next time. I will work on this document um, and put it up on, in the SharePoint 
and people are welcome to send me further suggestions or additions or corrections or whatever. Um, but the, my task would be to try to identify what I think are the potential contacts for as many of these as I can. Um, and I think also Darcy makes a good point about, I have been keeping past proclamations and I can also assemble those into a, into a file and that can be accessible to the committee. Um, so that's my task. Lost you, George. I'm sorry, you, you still hear me or not? I don't know what happened. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, so everybody's there, everybody can hear. Um, we have um, timeline. Lynn is not here. Um, she had. Uh, I think she might be in attendees. Okay, well, let me have a look. Um, so um, it, it's listed as Lynn PC, so that might be her. I don't know. Well, I, I will bring her in if she, she may not have anything she wishes to present to us. I think we as a committee, as I said last time, we are now keepers of the process for what that, whatever that means. Um, but we're supposed to be keeping our eye on this. And um, part of it is, you know, just agreeing with Paul what the deadlines are. And um, part of it is making sure the process is, is going forward. Much, almost all of this, probably all of this is done by staff. They've been doing it for a long time. Do we want to review evaluation documents? Um, do we need to, you know, what's our role in this other than just making sure that, that things are moving along? Um, so that's where I'm at. And I'm looking for guidance from the council president, but I'm also looking for guidance and thoughts from my committee members. Um, the document is in your file or in, in SharePoint. And of course it's the one we've been using all along, um, mm -hmm. the timeline document. Um, I'm going to open it and share it for just briefly. And Mandy, are you your co-host? Is that correct? I can share. I'm no, not. I, I was going to say if you could just explore and see who, if if, if Lynn is here and well, she wishes to, yeah. I can't do that. You have to do that. Um, okay. All right. Well, we'll go to and... Okay. Let me see attendees. I can, I I can promote one. her to panelists. I'll do that. Thank you, Athena. Um, so we will bring her in, and I will share the screen um, for a moment and I will also try to get this bigger if I can. Zoom. Let's try 125%, see what that does. A little bit more. Okay. A little bit more, Georgie. Will do. Let's try 150%. Yeah, thank I, you. I, I can scroll here. So, so um, and Lynn may be busy doing other things. So, yeah, she, this she, is Lynn. <laughs> ah, this is Lynn's PC. It's not Lynn. When, it's I, Lynn's PC. when I registered to come in, it asked for my name, but then it listed Lynn's PC. So, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I've always wanted to talk to your PC. Get, get the there secret story, get the true story. Okay, Lynn, um, we're at that point of the agenda where um, we're talking about the, the, the evaluation process and the goal setting process. Anything you wish to add or share with us at this point? The, the one, I have not done anything on paper, but I've been thinking about this. And the one stumbling block that I keep coming up with is the requirement in the charter that we have to evaluate the town manager annually. Mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to figure out if we moved the town manager evaluation to be completed in November, December, which I think is worth seriously worth considering. How do we accommodate for this six month gap? Do we just pray that nobody calls our hand on not following the charter? Couldn't we, Lynn, do a sort of uh, truncated or checklist kind of evaluation for that six months? There's, it, Pat, I'm just going to tell you, the amount of work that goes into doing these evaluations is not small. And well, so uh, I've tried to figure out what would a uh, mini yeah. look like? I don't know. Could we say, listen, annually in this case is every calendar year, and we did one in 21, and if we, 20, 
And if we do one in November, December of 21, we've still done it annually. Maybe that's the- mm, that we, That's what I would say. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So then if with that, I can take this and move everything on the evaluation. We already discussed the goal setting and the goal setting with the idea that we would set goals for, for but we would review them, but they would be considered at least two-year goals. Two-year yeah, goals, yeah. And yeah. then the only other thing I need to uh, bring this into sync with is the existing town manager's contract. Because right now we have always voted, you know, consistent with um, the evaluation, which also is consistent with his contract for whether he will have be compensated extra or not. And um, I also have not had a, a moment to talk about this with Paul. Sure. I'd like yeah. to, to do that. Okay. So that's really where I am. Okay. The idea that we, we say, listen, we've done it annually because we just did it in a different month. Mandy Jo, I think that helps a lot. Um, okay. And Darcy, yeah. put her hand up. Please, Darcy, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, um, uh, I'm just talking off the top of my head here because I haven't thought, I hadn't heard your proposal, but um, I can see where we would want to do that. Um, the, the issue with upcoming councils, like a new council will be seated in January, right? Right. Um, so then they will have to operate on the goals that we decided the month before, or your, you know, this this group of people decided the month before, and then they won't have a chance to make their own goals until the end of half of their half of their first term is over. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't really necessarily have an opinion about it. I'm just thinking. No, I know, no, that's right. It's, Mandy yeah. has her hand up. Mandy, please. I, I think we're actually thinking more along the lines of, and, and, and Lynn can correct me, of sort of decoupling the two from each other, which sounds strange, but doing the goals still as a fiscal year. So like the new council seated in January, they would update the goals that June or July. And it would be essentially their terms goals two years, which would go six months into the next council's goals. Um, but a council is not going to be able to be seated in January and in January have goals. Um, right. You know, so that six months allows them, the manager to continue sort of finishing the prior council's goals while the new council gets its feet and sets their own goals. We could move that maybe a quarter or earlier, but I think the thought was to maybe decouple that from the evaluation. Um, I don't know how well that works and what Paul thinks about that, but the council goals, the second half of an evaluation, the second half of our goals is much more on the administrative side that you know can be evaluated. I, I foresee not changing very frequently in terms of goals. Um, versus the first half, which were more of the policy goals. So I think you can decouple those two in a way that as we figure it out, will work. Can I, can I just speak to that yes. add on? Um, so, you know, a new council is seated in January. One of the things that you would hope that they would do either in an orientation period or as soon as they're seated, is the town manager would give an oral presentation on the goals and you know a kind of a, a six month progress report. At that point, if the council, the now newly seated council, wants to do some amendments, they could do it because what you want to be able to do is in fact evaluate from essentially January 1st to December 31st, so that the, the um, town manager needs to know these are the 12 months that I'm looking at. The, the biggest problem is then it's not consistent with budget, which often drives what you're able to achieve with goals. And the other 
issue could be that in June, when you reestablish goals or whatever, you now change them. But the question then is, are you now evaluating the town manager for six months on the previous goals and six months on new tweaked goals? And I, I totally agree with Mandy Joe about the more of the administrative goals. They don't change that much. It's really the policy goals that have more likelihood to be tweaked or changed. I mean, if you, yeah. we would not have included some of the goals that we now include um, in policy. The town manager may feel like we're moving the goalposts on it, right? In other yeah, words, I, I'm you're, just trying you're going to... this way, and all of a sudden, <laughs> and that seems but, very unfair. You, but, yeah. you know, I'm I'm glad that Darcy is now in this discussion because Darcy was in one of the groups when we spent a fair amount of time trying to establish goals. Yeah. <laughs> about it. So. Um, I'm not, it, it, because I have nothing else to say, I'm not sure how much time you want to spend on this. Job. No, I, I want to just touch base with you. I appreciate you coming in to, to give us an update. I guess as chair, I'm just concerned, um, you know, going forward that in each time we meet, talking about goalposts, we just keep kicking the ball down the field right. um, farther and farther. And I understand that there's just, there's only so much human beings can do. Um, but I guess I'm looking for guidance both from you and from my colleagues as to, um, what we need to decide um, at some point, and we're still not there um, in terms of what this actually is going to look like. Uh, this document that we're going to then supposedly follow and recommend or show to the council and say, "Here's here's the basic roadmap that we're using." Um, we're not. We can't make that decision today, but at some point, I think soon, we have to make some decisions about what's going to be due when. Um, and I don't know how to. Proceed with that. Maybe it's something that, that uh, we should assign to a small group to sort of work on outside of the committee. Uh, I, I just don't know. I just, it just seems to be difficult for us to do it in committee. It seems really hard for us, given all the various permutations. What's helpful is when you come forward with a specific proposal and then we can chew on it, but you've got so many things on your plate. It's just, it's not fair. So let me, let me just say, George, I just as soon take this back. If you form a subcommittee, they have to meet in public anyway. I know, exactly. Adds to the confusion. Right. Right. Um, and I think, you know. I, mean, I have two larger issues, but they, you know, I'm not even sure I should bring them up. I mean, one of just is, do we even need to look at these data collection instruments? Are we just going to, when they should be starting to be collected? And the staff does that anyway, but you know, uh, do we need to look at them? Do we want to look at them? Do we want to yeah, evaluate? The them? staff does not do the instruments. They do the data collection. Okay. So who creates the instruments? Uh, basically, I've either created them or right. used what was done in the past. And I think that there might, I'm just thinking out loud, but there might be a place for the committee of five of us to look at these instruments and say, you know, uh, but this might create more chefs in the kitchen, but still, um, you know, uh, one of the things that I think I personally feel is this process is much too complicated, much too right. Um, couldn't this be simplified to some degree um, and, and make life easier for everybody and still achieve the goal, which is an evaluation? Um, so uh, but is there a role for us to play in that? And looking at these instruments, could we say, you know, can we simplify this? Um, the first one, of course, is, is the council uh, evaluation document. Um, is this something this committee wants to get into? Um, somebody needs to look at it uh, at some point, um, I think. And it seems to be, it would be this committee. Um, so what role do we wanna play there? Um, do we wanna leave it up to the council president and, and just uh, not worry about it? And we just attend to sort of timelines and make sure everybody is, is on the same page? Or do we wanna actually look at the evaluation documents, the instruments, and, and discuss them from the point of view, are we satisfied by them, A, and B, can we simplify them in any way? Can we do anything to make this process a little less burdensome on everyone involved? The president, the, the, the town manager, the counselors, et cetera, everyone seems to be carrying a tremendous load. Um, and I'm not sure that that's really been all that, uh, that it really improves the final product. Lynn. At a minimum, we could start looking at the doc at the instruments. Um, I have some thoughts about them having now developed uh, two rounds of the one we use. Yes. I certainly have some thoughts about the one that 
we've been using for staff. It's not been changed in 10 years. Um, and I even have, and I have some additional thoughts about what we go out to the public with. Um, so that's one issue. Uh, the other issue is I do think I need to have a conversation with Paul where I talk about the timing of goals, contract, and evaluation. Okay. I mean, so, we've already had one conversation with him once, and it may be that it would be good to have him also come back to this committee with when we have a more solid uh, basis for a discussion. Okay. So what I'm going to, what I'm hearing is that it might not be a bad idea. I will reach out to Lynn, obviously, on this, that sometime soon on our agenda, we have an item that we will devote some time to uh, related to looking at specific data collection instruments and reviewing them with Lynn present um, and talking about them. And secondly, we're waiting to hear from Lynn um, on our conversation with Paul and when it would be appropriate to um, bring him into the discussion one more time. And at that point also, we would be um, sort of reviewing this document that's in front of us today in terms of just timeline. So I would suggest our next meeting, we begin looking at these data collection instruments um, but I'll leave that up to, I'll be in touch with Lynn, but I'd like to put that on the agenda. And uh, does that seem sensible to the rest of you? I think this is important. I think it's something we need to keep our eyes on, but it is complicated, there are a lot of moving parts. Okay, I'm not, I see Lynn's hand still up, but uh, that may be residual, but if not, Lynn, please go ahead. Actually, I had a comment on an earlier item when I was still in the audience, I had my hand up. Oh, okay. I apologize for not seeing it's that. It's just very it. quick, and it has to do with your resolutions. The CPOs have played a significant role in resolutions. Yep. And I think that's a terrific way for them to be connecting both with the community and the council. Yep. But Angela tends to keep a running list. And uh, as we know, Jen Moyston has been particularly active in um, making, in trying to bring in more uh, communities with resolutions. So that was just a, a comment I wanted to make. Good, good. The GOL should be definitely reaching out to them and working with them. Uh, in most cases, that would be the chair, um, but then inviting them when appropriate, as we did the other day with Jen, um, I think makes a lot of sense. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to go quickly to bylaws for future consideration. I'd like to put that up on the screen. Um, Lynn, thank you. Uh, you're welcome to stay if you wish, but I imagine you might have a few other things you'd like to do. Um, but I'm going to put this document up, I hope, in just a moment. Um, let me just close that. And um, Mandy's been working hard. I want to just begin to think about us going forward in terms of our agenda. Um, I want to go through this with you for just a few minutes. It's now 12.15. We have basically this. I'd like to give about 10 minutes at most of this. And then we just have some minutes I'd like us to approve. And then any new business or any uh, future agenda items. And then we're done. So I think we can end on time. I um, apologize, but what happened to the appointment process? Uh, the, the appointment process. Okay. Um, okay. I think it was number um, five on the agenda. Uh, so, oh, okay. yes, right. You're absolutely correct. All right. My apologies. It's a bit more important than by Yes, I think, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely correct. So let me just take this away for a moment. Um, and let's go back to that. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. We had as a discussion item, I don't know how I lost that in the, in the scrum, um, whether there should be a single process for making recommendations to the council for appointments to council appointed bodies. This is something that was raised in the uh, councilor comments at the end of the year and was uh, and got into the GOL report and was picked out by uh, at least one of you as something worthy of us talking about. So please, yes, let's go to item number five. My apologies. Thoughts on this? Because right now we have um, two committees, uh, CRC and GOL that do make recommendations to the council on um, council appointed uh, bodies. And um, they have fairly similar processes, but not identical. Um, there have been issues raised in the past about term limits. 
At one point, I think CRC sent uh, a memo to um, GOL on that issue and asked for clarification. So that's one thing that we could take up, if not in detail today, certainly at the next meeting. Um, and then there's the interview process. So um, I'm not sure quite how to tackle this, I, um, but I'm open to thoughts just, uh, so Sarah, please, why don't you start? Um, so I guess what I would say is that I think that when you're a member of the public and you want to serve on a committee, I think that the, it seems more clear to you what the process is to be elected to a committee. If there's one process, we already have two because town manager appointments are so different than town council appointments. Um, and I just from being in town government for a pretty long time, besides hearing about parking, I think the other thing that I've heard a lot is that people would apply to be on a committee. They would never hear if their application actually made it to anyone. Then they would never hear if uh, interviews started. Then they would never hear who actually got on the committee. And it was really frustrating to people. People really felt like their applications went into a black hole and that you needed to know someone in government in order to get on a committee. And those are committees even like the, the, the ag committee. So they're not like real high profile committees. So for me, I think that it's really important that we have made, I think town council's made great strides in making the process for application um, to the committees that we appoint to be much more public. You can see when someone got your application, you can see ahead of time um, when interviews are gonna be, everybody gets interviewed. Um, I think all of those things are extremely important. And I think that it also makes it seem much more, um, I guess I'm gonna use the awful word transparent, if the application, what you have to go through um, for all town council communities are the same. And I, I know that there's also the debate, well, but different, you know, just putting somebody on finance committee um, as a non-voting member is so different than somebody for planning um, or ZBA. But I, I just wanna put in my pitch for why I think that they should be consistent. So I'll just, I'll stop there for right now. Well, Sarah, if you, uh, good. Um, uh, I mean, I'm gonna put up on the screen if people want. Uh, I have in the, in the, uh, in the SharePoint and uh, available obviously in the, uh, right, in the posting. Uh, the specific policies for uh, all three committees, OCA back in the day, and then CRC and GOL. Um, and I guess I need some guidance from, from those who think- Mandy has her hand up, George. No, I know, I know. Okay, but sorry. I'm, 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 no, it's okay. I, I just, I'm a little bit at sea as to what exactly specifically people are talking about. Are they talking about how meetings are noticed to the public? Are they talking about the interview process? Are they talking about specific, I mean, Right now, all the, both committees require an SOI. Both committees have public interviews. They do the interview process slightly differently, but they're public and, and available to everybody. Um, both uh, committees uh, obviously begin with the CAF. Um, so I guess I'm struggling to get clear on what it exactly is that's so different that, that needs to be made the same for everybody. Um, so Mandy, uh, please. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to give a little bit of background of where this agenda item likely came from, which is a vote of CRC back in October. Um, after CRC did the planning board and ZBA, actually, I'm not sure we did the ZBA appointments. We might've only done planning board last spring because I think ZBA got done by OCA before OCA was dissolved. Um, there was yet again, as with many of the ZBA and um, CRC appointments that council has done, discussion regarding term limits or no term limits and reappointment and how do you consider someone who's already on the board that's seeking essentially a reappointment um, to seeking to continue their term or add to their term on, the, on a particular body. And so CRC discussed that after the process, after the vacancies were filled for um, planning board last summer. 
CRC discussed this um, and recognized that there were apparent differences amongst counselors regarding how you consider reappointments and term limits. Um, they acknowledged that the council hadn't adopted the language in the town's appointed committee handbook. And so it wasn't binding on the council. Um, and yet each of the policies, as Sarah said, um, regarding CRC's policy and um, GOL's policy on finance regarding just the process for recommending appointments have now differed beyond the fact that each individual counselor also has their own opinions on those two matters. Um, and it appeared to be causing issues, not just at the stage of council appointments when it's at the council, but when committees are trying to make recommendations to the council. So CRC in some sense believed that, I'm reading from the report <laughs> here, um, that, that um, the, any policy on how to consider reappointment requests or term limits is likely more of a council policy, not of an ind individual committee process to recommend appointments. Um, and since the issue kept recurring and there were multiple committees having to consider this matter now, um, it should probably be discussed in more detail at the full council after review and recommendation by appropriate committee. Um, so, and then the question was whether such a referral or recommendation should result in a uniform form, unified policy or not, CRC did not discuss or take a stance on. But it did vote unanimously to quote, request the council refer to GOL sections 2.3 and 2.5 of the town's appointed committee handbook for report and recommendation to the council on whether the council should adopt with or without modification those sections. I don't think that referral ever actually happened, but it ended up in sort of this future considerations relating to how, how we're talking about it today. Right. But I, I just wanted to, to, to bring forth that sort of history as to one of the reasons it's in front of us today is it's been a struggle, particularly during the recommendation process and then when those recommendations make it to the council, how those sections of the committee handbook versus the corresponding sections in the process to make recommendations that each of the two committees, CRC and finance have adopted, relate to each other are they applicable? Are they not? Are they applicable to the council as a whole? Um, or does each individual counselor get to make their own decision on how to weigh term limits or not? Um, you know, I, I, to go beyond that, I struggle as Sarah sometimes does with this transparency issue that she hates using the word, but um, I think the people, the residents should have, should know how they're going to be treated um, and what the process is. Um, what I struggle with is as a counselor, can I cede my um, beliefs on whether there should be term limits or not and my beliefs individually on a reappointment and what reappointment means um, and what a vacancy means to the full council um, as a policy, or does that reside individually with each of us as counselors who were elected by the people knowing that the, with the people knowing we would be as individual counselors voting on individual recommendations for actual appointments. So I struggle with whether it should be a council policy or not in terms of those particular issues. Um, but I do agree that whatever happens needs to be transparent. You know, and so maybe if we don't agree that it should be a council policy on term limits, maybe what the council policy is a statement that says there is no policy on term limits and each counselor will deal with that on their own, right? And so it, for what it's worth, that's, that's what I've got right now. Um, Sarah, go ahead. So yeah, that's the struggle. And that's the thing that I feel like it has made appointments, our appointments so, um, I'm going to say awful. I'm just, I have a migraine and I pulled out my back and I have an ear infection. And so, yeah, awful. 
And I think that's something that we we do need to agree on. So do we take the the handbook that we kind of relied on because we weren't a council? Do we still rely on that? Or do we as a council say, forget that, that was never us and it's not us? Do we make it, I think we need to make a decision as a council, do we pay any attention to term limits and do we want to place them or do we want to tell the next council or whoever's coming in, we don't pay attention to that. Um, and I think that we also, Mandy is 100% right, like when it comes to deciding and also deciding for reappointments, for me, I feel like the council needs to set forth how we deal with reappointments. Do we even consider them? If we consider it and you're, you're already been sitting there, what does your, do we want to say like, look, you needed to do A, B, and C in order to get um, to be put back on? Or do we want to just say, look, it's up to us. We're going to look at everybody. There's nothing you can do as job performance that's going to mean that you would get, you know, reappointed again. We're just not going to, we're not doing that. And, you know, we'll give you reasons when, when things come up again, they're, you know, we'll just, we'll decide and we'll tell you, but that's what we do. I think we have to make that clear. And I think part of it is so that the, when the council mate has to make a decision again, it'll take away some of the um, hotly debated questions. I think it would make it a, a more constructive process. And then I think for people who want to be elected to planning board, zoning board, um, finance committee as a non-voting member, they'll know, they'll either know what they have to do to get on, they'll, have, they'll know what they have to do to stay on, or they will just know that the council has deemed that there aren't really any hard and fast rules, but the council will decide um, what's going to have to happen by its wisdom at that time. I just think that we need to give the next council and the public that guidance. And honestly, I'm so, <laughs> I'm sure Mandy Joe also, who has thought this out so much and put so much effort into this, it's just an exhausting topic that actually I don't have the fight for anymore. But I think that the council absolutely should weigh in and help out the next town council. Well, it's going to be our role, I think, as GOL to sort of shape the debate. And uh, I don't think this is something you want to just put on a, a council agenda and then just let people sort of just go on and on. Um, at some point, they need some kind of direction or guidance from us, and then they can do with it what they wish. They could just say it's a bunch of nonsense and, and, and just do go off and spend two and a half hours or three hours discussing it. But um, I guess I need help from you to get clarity on what you want us to do. Um, I, you know, so I have in front of me, I don't have it on the screen, but I have in front of me the two documents that CRC and GOL use, and they're very close to identical in many areas, but they do have slight differences right. in their approach to term limits. Um, in CRC, it basically says it treats every opening where the receipt is held by a current member who seeks reappointment or not as a vacant position. And that's not the language of, of GOL. Um, GOL essentially says that there is a preference given for reappointment, but um, it doesn't guarantee it. Um, I'm not sure those are ultimately all that different, quite frankly, and I'm not sure, do you want to actually craft language that both have to use? Um, so it, there's term limits. There's also the whole issue of just the process, which I think is very public and transparent. Um, so I guess I need help, if not right now, because we're nearing the end of our time today, I, for the next agenda, I need help on what specifically people want to do. They want to talk about term limits? Do they want to talk about interview processes? Do they want, what is it specifically they want to discuss that they feel the council then should, that we could then recommend to the council, uh, they should take up as a, as, a, as a larger discussion? What are the issues here? And if it is term limits, can we come to some um, understanding ourselves as what the issues are and then present that to the council. Um, I, for one, speaking personally, think that I don't have a problem. I just don't have a problem. The public, the process is public. Um, there are slight differences between the way the two committees go about it, but it's all there in black and white. It's sent to all the, the, the candidates. Anyone in public can find it. It's, it's on both of our websites, you know, so it's not hidden. It's, it's met. But if there's a feeling amongst the, the group of here that there should be a single council process for X, Y, or Z. I need to know what X, Y, and Z are, and then we need to talk about it. Um, so I don't share the concern that I hear from some, but that's just one person. And I'm perfectly willing to put this on an agenda for next time. And I apologize for getting to it so late and almost missing it. That's my fault. But 
I do need help as to what exactly you want us to talk about. Is it term limits? Is Darcy it, has her hand up. I, I, I interview process, is it? Right. So Darcy, please help me. Yeah, I guess um, I think that, you know, it seems like the threshold question is, do, do does this group recommend uh, a unified policy, a town council policy on this? And then it makes sense to me to look at those sections that CRC was suggesting that we look at, which I think are term limits. And is the other one interview process? No, it my is understanding is true. I'm sorry? The interview process between CRC and GOL is different in the sense oh. that the CRC plans its questions in advance all, and all of the applicants are there at the same time and they take turns. What we did was have individual interviews and individual counselor questions that were not decided on in advance. So those are, there are differences in that process. And are people suggesting that the council wants to adopt a uniform interview process? I mean, I personally would be opposed to that. I think it's crazy. Um, as long as there's an interview process and you know what it is and it's, you know, I don't see a problem. But that's a discussion that perhaps we need to have as a group. But yes, there's the difference there. Um, but there is a difference with um, term limits as well. Mm -hmm. Darcy? Yeah. yeah, I guess I, I think, you know, like if we were uh, recommending a unified policy, then that would kind of require our looking through, you know, sort of taking up one of these sets, maybe the GOL set and going through and writing a new rule for our rules of procedure, um, which would encompass all the different parts, but mostly we may not change anything except those sections that were, you know, well, Darcy, when we have another, uh, we will have further appointments to make before this committee uh, dissolves, before our term is up. And when we do that, we review our policy, we review our process, and we can change it at that point. So we don't, um, so at that point, this committee would review the process, it would look at the document, which is available to you at any time to review, and then we would, we would uh, either accept it or we would amend it, and then we would go to the process of interviewing the candidates. So all these things are still up for, um, as a committee, they're still up for discussion review as a committee when we get ready to actually interview somebody for finance. Um, I think they're excellent and I will defend them to the death, but I'm only one vote. Um, so, but we do that as a natural course. That's a whole different question. This is a question about whether we as a group want to uh, spend the time, which we can, trying to come up with a set of policies that we want every committee to follow, which in essence means CRC and GOL, um, and that's what I'm asking. Is that what you want to do? And if it is what you want to do, then I will put some, I mean, some documents are already available, were available to you today, um, but uh, the CRC memo is not there. I will put that in as well. Um, but I, I want to focus it as much as I can for the sake of our time and the sake of getting something done. It sounds like term limits is clearly something that some of you, at least one of you, maybe more of you, would like to review with the thought that maybe we would recommend a, um, a policy that the council would adopt for all of uh, these kinds of situations. That term limits would be one. Mandy. So maybe there's a solution that's sort of a middle ground. Um, right now, each committee has their own process for making a recommendation. Um, much of that process is actually identical between the two committees. And so maybe there's a middle ground of GO, GOL making a recommendation that the council adopt a, not necessarily a process, but a, um, here's how things, it, I guess it's kind of a process, but it's not a specific process. It's things that are more generic of take things like you'll fill out a calf. When the, the CAF, when you hit submit, it goes to every counselor, but the chair of the relevant appointing committee will respond and acknowledge receipt, something like that. Some of these basic ones. And then when you get to something like interviews, it could say something like each committee, each appointing, each recommending committee will adopt a, their own process for interviews. Um, you know, and, and so the council's seeding that part to each individual committee for some of these things where 
you could have a unified process that that is more transparent about sort of the steps that will take place there will be interviews every candidate will get an interview every person who submitted a cap will be contacted when there's a vacancy and that process starts people will submit SOIs, but the nitty gritty about how that interview will happen or when the SOIs will be submitted is not part of the council policy. That's left up to each individual recommending body. And then there's the dealing with the, uh, the, the people who want to continue their term and have sort of essentially submitted for another two, three, one, you know, we've got different lengths of terms for our appointments too. Um, and then how do you deal with that and term limits? And, and part of a recommendation could be that the council takes no position on term limits. It is up to each individual counselor to make that decision on their own. That would probably be where I stand. Um, <laughs> you know, but it could also be the council has a term limit policy of X. Um, the certain things are not left up. So maybe there's a middle ground um, where you can have the transparency of here's how things will work and what the steps are to get to that recommendation and then the recommendation, but not set forth the exact process each committee will use to comply with those steps. So what I'm going to ask, I, I, we, we need to move on and we need to get a meeting to an end, but what I would ask, I will put this on the agenda next time. I'll put it near the top of the agenda and I will not forget to, I'll not skip over it. I apologize again for that. But uh, what I uh, would ask of you is that you look at the two documents that currently are used by CRC and this committee. Um, they're both in the packet. They'll be in the, in the SharePoint again for the next meeting. I will include the uh, CRC memo that was originally uh, meant to be referred to GOL, but I think Mandy is correct. It never actually did happen, but it, it's, that mem memo will be included. And I need you then to bring to me and to, the, to your colleagues on this committee specific places where you feel that there's a problem because I don't see it, okay? I'm just, that's just me, but I don't see it. So help us next time with specific, so is it term limits and where do you see the difference and or whatever it is, and then have ready an argument why you think the council needs to weigh in on this. When I look at these two documents, they seem perfectly, you know, they're slightly different, but it's public, transparent, blah, blah, blah. It lays out the process. Everybody gets notified, da, 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 da. I don't see a problem. So help me see what the problem is and help convince the rest of us that if you think it's necessary, that we need to go to the council and say, we need a one single policy on X, Y, or Z. That's what I need from you next time. Um, and if, so if we're going to have a fruitful discussion, Darcy. Yeah. Um, so, okay. We'll collect that. And, um, the, I, I would just recommend that everybody not only look at the GOL and the CRC policies, but also look at the town manager's handbook policy on term limits and the OCA policy on term limits, because three of them all agree on the term limits. Um, and so I would suggest looking at those okay. and just thinking about the whole purpose of why, why those policies were set up to balance experience with the need for new blood. Um, and that, that is sort of like why, and it's actually written into them as to what, what the thinking is behind allowing reappointment after one term and, and generally allowing people to serve for around six years before they're, you know, it, that it's a good idea to replace them with new blood. So I would strongly suggest that you look at all of those um, and think about whether we should have a, a, a council-wide policy. Fair enough. And this will be at the top or very near the top. Again, hoping we don't get, we don't have any proclamations or resolutions that I'm aware of, but that does tend to eat up some time, I know, but it will be near the top of the agenda. And these documents, uh, some of them are already there. I will make sure the uh, um, CRC memo is there. The town manager document is, is in your packet for today, um, but it'll also be in the SharePoint for next time as well. Okay. Um, so I'm obviously not going to uh, go, we'll have to leave for next time a review of bylaws for consideration. 
um, I would like to adopt the three sets of minutes. I looked through them, thought they were fine. Does anyone have any particular concerns or issues? And if you do, um, please speak up. But otherwise, I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, adopt or accept the three minutes of minutes of January 20, February 3rd, and February 17. Um, before I entertain that motion, any concerns or problems? Would you like to remove any one of those sets from this list um, for future review? Um, as I said, the chair has looked through them. They're excellent. Um, they're quite detailed and I have no changes to make. I don't see any hands or faces or anything. Uh, so I'm going to then make the motion that we accept as presented the minutes of January 20, February 3rd and February 17th, 2021. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Thank you, there is a second. Um, I'm gonna go immediately to a vote. I'm gonna start this time with Sarah. Aye. And Darcy. Why don't you take me last because I wasn't there at one of those meetings. Okay, um, you, okay. The chair is a yes, uh, Mandy. Aye. And uh, Pat. Aye. And uh, Darcy. Uh, abstain. Aye. So the vote is four in favor, one abstention. Um, the motion carries. What I'm seeing for, uh, there are no items unanticipated. Um, there are no attendees. Uh, we have driven them all away. Um, so there is no public comment. Um, I have no items unanticipated. For next time, what I'm um, anticipating is a, a thorough discussion of what we have just been spending some time on. And there will be documents, ample documents available to you to review on this idea of recommending something to the council as a single policy. I would like to put the data collection instruments on the agenda um, and begin looking at those. Um, that's a second item I'd like to put on the agenda for next time. If Lynn has had a conversation with Paul, um, that may also appear, but I think we can take up the data collection instruments on our own and begin reviewing them. Um, Anything else that people would like to have on the agenda for next time? Okay, um, that's, those are the two items that I see right now. Um, and again, of course, um, the third item would be uh, actually going through now um, bylaw by bylaw to see where we are. Cause I think Mandy's done a number of, uh, gotten some good results back. Um, we could actually begin moving on some of these bylaws um, either to make recommendations or dismiss. Um, so I'm going to begin uh, next time as the third main item, um, working our way through that document. Um, I've spoken to Sarah and, and she was asked not to be uh, involved, at least at the moment in the AgCom. So I'm gonna, we'll continue to work on how to get those addressed, but there are others that we can begin to turn to. Darcy, are you still okay with the, the ones that I've sent to you? Um, or no, do you know? I can't can, remember which ones. I know, were. I know, it's, it's a pain, <laughs> but it's, we, we need to try and, and just, and the emphasis next time is gonna be on Mandy and me um, and maybe, maybe Pat, um, just to see where we stand. Both of you are new um, and I'm not gonna put any pressure on either of you, um, but um, Mandy, myself and Pat. Mandy? You have them right in front of you. Can you remind me? Uh, I will send them to you. I will, I will send them to you. Um, and as a Sorry. reminder, that's all right. Mandy? So George, I was thinking of turning, because I've gotten some responses from the town manager on various ones. I was thinking of turning it into a memo with a recommendation on each of the bylaws of what to do, whether it's a change or not. And so that we'd have something other than- That your, would be great. Yeah, and we could start, and we could start with that. that. Well. Okay, that'd be great. If you could do that and submit that to me, I will put it in the packet and we'll use that as our working document when we turn to this. Um, but that's the other sort of, you know, I don't okay. call it the weight that weighs over us is trying to get through these. So thank you. Please do that both if you could. Darcy, I'll send you uh, your set. I think it was just two. Um, and um, that's it. Uh, that's all I have. It's only 1245. Okay, sorry guys. Um, try to do better next time. Try to remember the agenda next time. Take care. All right, see you guys later. Take care, go well. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Emily. Bye-bye. Thanks, Emily.